Hi everyone, uh, this is Thugrug showing you another tanking video. Uh, this time we're tackling 15 Raven's Claw. Um, for swaps, you want your regular skip set. Uh, personally, I started carrying tier 4 tenacity shoes with me for my skip set also. Um, you'll want a royal helmet for your main helmet. And for boss swaps, you want a broadsword. 8.3 miss color uh, is my preference. I think the minimum is like 6.3 um, and a soldier helmet. And then for all the abilities, you want the damage reduction and increased healing, CC duration on everything else, and yeah, pretty standard stuff. So this is going to be the beginner's tanking video. So we're going to be doing uh, smaller pulls that are a little bit simpler and more difficult to screw up. And um, that way uh, anyone who's new to tanking will probably be able to do it just fine. So for this we start with an enfeeble and roll past the bats. Then we just walk through those and uh, Usually you would snare, but I fat fingered my E there. So the downside of that is that now I need to wait 10 seconds before I can do the next pull. Alright, then for the next pull, you just auto attack him, poison the next group, and then you walk backwards and use your E to dodge all their auto attacks. Build up to four auto attacks, snare, walk away. Alright, for this pull, you just start with Enfeeble, walk up and cue them. The spinner begins spinning after two auto attacks. So after his second auto attack, you can start your E and by the time you finish your E animation he'll be spinning so then it's a uh, you're able to interrupt it without taking any damage and now that I've snared him I'm just watching this snare debuff it's about to run out so I'm walking up get real close to him before you E because you want to make sure that he's spinning for auto attacks and snare and I'm actually a little bit late on this one but uh, just gonna fix it here. Alright, that was a little bit messy. But uh, normally you wouldn't be impatient like I was, and you would wait for the patrol. Um, when the patrol comes back, you can do it just like the previous pull. Start with Enfeeble, um, walk up and cue them all, wait for them to auto attack twice and then use your E and then uh, build up to four auto attacks, snare them and walk away. We're watching the snare debuff again, it's running out, so you walk in, E them, four auto attacks, you're probably gonna die, yeah. Alright, now for this pull it's the same as before, you start with Enfeeble, cue them as they auto attack, E after they start spinning, four auto attacks, snare, Q as you walk away. Watching that snare debuff again. Usually you want it to run out just as you get there. And then just E. Alright, this next pull is the first one where you really need the Royal Helmet. Um, up until now, Royal Helmet is just a uh, extra interrupt in case you miss your stun on the spinners. So you poison this guy here, then use your helmet, and you roll the first auto attack from them. So then you take zero damage and they're stunned. Keep queuing them. He's going to do an ability as soon as he's not stunned anymore. 
So now you move here. Fourth auto attack. Stun. Root. Roll away. So uh, during the first stun from Royal Helmet, I built up to three auto attacks, and I didn't auto attack a fourth time. I waited for his ability because that's extra time for the DPS to do damage. And then after his ability, I did my fourth auto attack. Here you just stun him. And I actually snare before I get to four auto attacks because if I go until four auto attacks, they'll be able to auto attack me before I walk away. And I'll eat a total of like six or seven auto attacks. Uh, for this pull, you just start with Royal Helmet, cue them, and I stand on this square right here, this spot right here, wait for their ability, then you stand to the north of them to group them together, four auto attacks, stun, snare, walk away. And here I ask the DPS to reset the patrol when he's north. Because when you reset a patrol, he takes a straight line to the end of his patrol route. So he'll cut this corner now and I can stun all of them together. Stun them, Q, build up to three auto attacks. You'll have time to Q one more time. Use your enfeeble. Stun them with your E, root, and you're out. I like coming to this side here because you can get the checkpoint from right here. And uh, that way, if your team wipes, you can respawn right here and you lose maybe 3 seconds as opposed to more than 45 seconds coming from the other direction. So uh, what you just saw there, I eat back in without waiting for the spinner to spin or auto attacks or anything like that because the crossbow does his ability as soon as you get into range. And as long as you stun the crossbow during his ability, he won't jump backwards. Here I'm just going to walk into range, walk out, and then use my E to iframe everything. So here's their auto attacks that I iframed with my E and now they're all grouped nicely. Four auto attacks, snare, and walk away. If the DPS is good, they won't be afraid of hitting people. They'll know that there's enough room for people to stand next to each other and keep DPSing here. Alright, for mages, I do them two at a time. Just start with Royal Helmet, cue them, build up to three auto attacks. Just as the stun runs out, fourth auto attack and stun them, snare, and roll away. That way they're snared, you took zero damage, the only damage I took was from this AoE here, and um, Essentially, you can do this without a healer, doing it this way. Alright, then the same thing for these. Start with the helmet. Q. One. Two. Three. Watching the debuff. Four. Stun. Snare. Q. Roll away. The reason why you do the second stun there is because they'll do the ability as soon as you're done with the first stun. So uh, you're interrupting that ability so that your DPS can continue focusing on DPS. And just now we didn't kill the mages fast enough so I used my ease iframe to go back in and stun them. And then uh, I used my shoes immediately after that because uh, Mage auto attacks are really weird, and uh, turn 
trying to tell the DPS to move. I guess I'll just do this. They'll get the picture. So I did that pull by poisoning them and uh, just pulling them into this room here. Thor is kind of separated from the healer because no one was listening when I was giving instructions. But uh, it's okay. Normally, uh, for better... Oof. I'm sorry, Thor. So that's kind of a downside of uh, waiting until the end of the snare to go in and interrupt them. Uh, they'll move just enough for someone like Thor to get in range, and then they take a ton of damage before you stun them. But uh, on, like when I'm trying a little bit harder, you know, doing fancier pulls and stuff, we'll actually do those spinners with these mages here. And uh, that's what the DPS were expecting me to do. So that's why they weren't listening right away. Same thing as before, your four auto attacks, do a second stun, snare, roll away. In this room, the mini boss patrols to a spot right here. If she's standing there, you cannot hit these mobs because the mini boss will pull also. But if she's not there, you can do them normally. Stun, build up to three auto attacks, watch their debuff bar, four auto attacks, stun, snare, walk away. And after this pole dies is when you're going to swap to your soldier helmet. Here we're waiting for this patrol. He'll patrol all the way to the north into the other room. So just waiting him for him to come back down here. Uh, just like the other crossbows, you go in with the stun. Uh, I'm used to doing this without a healer, so like, I do just one Q, snare them, and walk away. Uh, depending on how good your DPS is at using invisibility, uh, you may need to Q them a few more times. Alright, this next pull is what you use a soldier helmet for. I come in from this side and wait until they're doing their auto attack, and then use your soldier helmet just kind of corral them into the corner and use your E. Build up to three auto attacks here. Wait for them to do an ability. Come up top and feeble. Fourth auto attack, snare, and roll away. So since they've been snared, they're going to do their ability as soon as I get close. So you can just go in and stun them. If you're uh, min-maxing, like say two DPS died instead of just one there, I would have let them do their ability before I stunned them. Because it's just more time that, they're doing zero, that the mobs are doing zero damage and your DPS has more time to kill them. Here you do an enfeeble, and actually I like poisoning this mage, just because it, it's difficult for the DPS sometimes to kill her in time. Four auto attacks, stun, or sorry, snare, and walk away. Again, you're watching the debuff bar here. It's very important, especially when the mobs are off your screen like this. Now right there, uh, it doesn't really matter what side you go to, whether you stay over here or come through past the checkpoint here. Uh, 
My rule of thumb is just follow your healer. Whatever your healer does, you should do also. Stick to your healer. Uh, here, start with Enfeeble and Poison the Dog. I Q them once, and then I drop my helmet on them. Use my E, 4 auto attacks, and Snare. Here's that Snare Bug I uh, explained in the Eternal Battle video. Um, whatever direction they auto attack last is the direction that the ability will appear to be going. But in reality, it's going to go towards whoever has aggro. Use your E to dodge their auto attack. Q them. They should be dead soon, so I'm getting kind of lazy here. Gonna grab that jacket so we don't need to wait 10 seconds. Alright, for this next one, I use Enfeeble Aura to pull the spinner on the right, walk past them, Q, and then E them after their second auto attack. Build up to four auto attacks, snare, and walk away. Remember that snare bug. Do not forget about the snare bug. Uh, you could easily wipe DPS, you could kill yourself. Um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with it. Again, we're watching the debuff bar. Four auto attacks. There's a snare bug. Alright, we're still good on time. Uh, using Feeble Aura here, just Q them. Wait for the second auto attack from the spinner and use your E. Um, a lot of the time I use the E to iframe his second auto attack and it actually works out pretty nicely. Um, right there I got to three auto attacks and I stopped auto attacking. I waited for the guys with whips to use their ability before I uh, did the fourth auto attack and snared them and that just buys the DPS more time to do uh, damage. Alright, for this here, uh, just gonna wait for the patrol. Once the patrol gets like right over here, you can use your helmet and stun all four of the mobs. Alright, right about there. Cue them and enfeeble right away. The dogs deal a lot of damage. E to interrupt them. You'll only get to three auto attacks before you run out of time here, but it's okay. watching that debuff bar again. There's a snare bug and now you can go straight in with your stun. Always aim the mobs away from the DPS. After that, uh, just swap to your skip set right away. Uh, by the time you get down here, you'll have all your cooldowns up. Uh, you want to use your invis before you get close to these mobs, uh, those guys, because their red aura that they do will take you out of invis. So if you aggro them before you're invisible, that red aura will just take you out of invis and you'll kill yourself for sure, uh, possibly one or two party members. Uh, yeah, Thor is the guy that I learned tanking from, so, uh, yeah, mo most of the stuff I originally learned from Thor, and, uh, he's a really cool guy, um, always telling me neat tricks and stuff. For this, you just wait for the patrol to get back over here, 
Start with Enfeeble, and you'll actually auto-attack to use your Bridge Watch Cape at the beginning. Q them, drop your helmet on them, then higher levels the dogs will still be alive, so you use your E. Uh, stun them, and snare them, even though you're not at 4 auto-attacks. It's just important that you get out of range and stop taking damage. Watching that debuff bar, they're doing an ability. I frame their auto attack. And for this next skip, you can actually do it with a spear and tenacity shoes, which will save you potentially like 45 seconds because you're not waiting for your boots cooldown after this skip. Alright, for the boss, uh, you need to swap to toughness, the damage reduction on everything. Uh, you want parry strike. Thor is going to be my second tank here. So, uh, for this, I start with poison, just in case the DPS is impatient and they start DPSing early. Wait for him to do that ability. You parry the first one, and then Thor taunted. All right. So now you wait for him to take two, and I don't have taunt. Uh, So, uh, in case shit ever hits the fan with you guys, uh, behind this table resets the boss. Alright, there's one, two, so parry the first one. and then use shoes on the second Thor parries Thor uses shoes and I taunt poison before I reflect for better damage shoes then Thor takes it back now for this method with two tanks it's really important that you have a high tier mist color so I bring 8.3. I I think I said at the beginning of the video, I think the minimum is like 6.3 or maybe it's 7.3. Not sure. But uh, that way you always have your parry strike up when uh, it's your turn to tank. And um, so I'm counting to two. I'm not counting the boss's abilities. I'm counting the number of defensives that Thor uses very important if he ever does that chain hook you have your helmet for it I'm gonna taunt so that Thor has more room to work with here so I'm saving a defensive by uh, I saw that hook coming and I hit around the corner here so that way I didn't get pulled into him
that's how you do a Ravenclaw. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope the video was helpful, and uh, hopefully this means no more impossible maps for you. Congratulations.